Hello, everyone. I'm Hawk. Yeah. Thanks for joining this session, XDX for transaction. Today, our topic is the create your custom component. Let me show my slide. Okay. Let's start with it. Okay, so this is the create your custom component. And the main way is not to create from scratch. Uh, today, I'm gonna introduce you just create custom component by combining the existing one. Yeah, which is more efficient than just starting from uh, something blank or from nothing. So first, well, I'll tell you, this is our first, the main topic of this. And I will use a credit card input as an example. So I create a credit card components uh, based on ZK's text box. And so we will create some several Java components and also JavaScript widgets to make it more uh, convenient uh, to make it real uh, practical credit card input. So this is our outline today. So first we can uh, demonstrate you some very basic uh, example. So let's try uh, with some very basic example is, uh, for example, we, if we want to create credit card box and uh, or credit card input, the first component we will think or the most close is the text box. So the, uh, the most straightforward way is we build it by one text box, uh, one, two, three, four, like this. We just limit its width. For example, let's show you the code is, uh, for example, like this. We just build a text box and limit max length and uh, also shorten it by using columns. So it just show uh, 60 digits. So you can see I can type here and I can type, cannot type anymore because of uh, max length. And so there are only 60 digits. So this is more straightforward way. But this looks a bit ugly because you can see all numbers in this text box are crowded together. So there are 16 digits and it's very crowded. It's very hard to read. So this is not, um, uh, although it still works, uh, but it's not very good uh, for uh, end users. Although it works, for example, you can see uh, I still, I cannot type more than 60 digits, but there are several problems. One is it's crowded and the second is you still can type some uh, characters or non numeric character inside it. So maybe you decide to uh, do it in a different way. For example, uh, yeah, because this one text box is too crowded, so maybe I can split it into four text box. For example, I can uh, like this, the source code is like this. We create text box and uh, we also limit its max length is four because each box uh, should have four digits. And uh, so I make some margin, so make it look a bit separated, instead of crowded to each other. And uh, I set the type uh, uh, with tail, it, it allow you to display. Uh, if you use a mobile device, you will uh, just display the, uh, the number pad only. It doesn't show uh, the character keyboard. So user will tend to input numbers only, but it's not a, a forbid. I mean, it's a it's not a enforced. You use if user one still can input uh, text inside the text box. So, but this will improve a little bit because you can see uh, when I type uh, numbers, the sixteen digits are uh, it's separated, so it's, it's better to read. But still, that's, there are several problems. For example, the, you need to move the focus uh, between the text box. Uh, when you type something wrong, you still need to yeah, manually click. So it's not very good. Also, it's uh, also allow you to type some uh, characters. So you can see uh, whether you use one text box or you build four text box, there are some problems. So we uh, start to improve it. First, we can uh, start by the simplest way, just using four text box 
in server side. I think most of you are most familiar with server side programs, so we start with server side one. So first we can combine the component into one. So we uh ZK call there's a feature we call macro components. So you can put them into uh macro components. Uh so another drawback is for the full text box is uh, when you want to get the number of credit cards, you need to uh, iterate these four, num four text box and extract get values for each one and combine it into one. So it's a bit um, troublesome to do so. So first we can try to make a macro component for this. Uh, and making macro component uh, is quite yeah, simple. Uh, first, we need to remove this. Uh, so we create a macro inside here. Uh, for example, we create a, a macro called um, credit card box. That's what we want, credit card box. And uh, we extend, it has to extend HTML macro components. And uh, we need to uh, define a template. So uh, actually we, and use the template uh, with this. This is a template uh, we can use for uh, for the macro component because yeah, we just create four. Uh, these macro components just created by four text boxes. So it's very, it seems uh, it's very suitable for our macro component. So we can see here. So most straightforward way is, okay, let's check macro component. We can declare it as a page based a page scope micro component. So first one, uh, we can do this. Uh, first, you can declare your component like credit card box and uh, you specify your URL, for example, here, credit card box here, and then you try to compose uh, the, your credit card uh, components by composing with DK's full text box. Okay, so that's all, that's what you can Specify here, then you specify the URL, then you specify your uh, component, uh, macro component class. Then you can start to run this. So you can see you will generate four box inside it. And we can also provide some function. For example, I want to create, uh, I want to get the number instead of iterating all this text box, so I want to show, for example, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I want to get it by calling one API like this, for example, credit card box, get numbers. Just one call, instead of I need to iterate four box to get one, uh, to combine four numbers. So we can add in uh, the methods here. You can see I just add method. So inside micro component, you can, it's better you directly component, uh, manu manipulate components itself. So we can just wire text box. That means wire four text box uh, here into this list. So if you create a new method to get number, it means I can uh, iterate each text box here to append its value into a string and return to uh, as a result. So we can see when I get numbers, actually just iterate each text box inside and get its value and then combine it to a string and go back. Okay, so this is uh, quite, I mean, quite simple. And you can even add your custom credit card box here. So maybe, uh, S class here. So if you want to add some uh, specific style, you can add it. For example, here you can see actually ZK generate four text box here, but in outside, uh, out of this four text box, actually there is a, uh, a, a div element rendered and it's by default it's called Z macro. So we, if we want to differentiate the Z macro from other Z macro, if there are other Z, Z macro, you can add this kind of S class credit card box, uh, which is the uh, the string here we add credit card box. Uh, it will render it here. So then you can try to uh, 
uh, if you want to select this component or we want to add some CSS customization on this, you can uh, use this class instead of this general ZMAC one to select it and add some uh, customization. So this is the first uh, first way uh, to combine four components or text box into one and just call get number. So yeah, it's uh, the simplest way to get uh, to make a macro component. And uh, we also have another way, uh, for example, back to one, our one text box. Um, if you don't like four text box, maybe you think it's too complicated. Maybe uh, we can change another way to use one text box. And, uh, but there's so usually another implementation is we use one text box, but we make it uh, add some space for each four numbers. For example, uh, let's try uh, this. Another example is here, uh, fours. Okay, so we, 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 there's another implementation is you can like this. You, we still use four, uh, one text box, but we add one small space between each four uh, digits. So make it easier or to read or easier to identify these credit card numbers. This is also the one of the common techniques. So when you delete, you can see will be delete and we'll add it and it will be add like this. Okay, so this is um, another way to create a credit card box, but this requires some uh, JavaScript implementation because this is all controlled by the client side, not the server side, okay. Basically, it's still uh, the text box. If you check here, uh, it's, it's still a text box. But inside the, we just cut, made a customized JavaScript widget to it. So, okay, let me show you the code. So uh, the code is a bit different because you can see we try to create a number padding box. Uh, this is, we use a TypeScript way, so you look a bit different from uh, what you see before. So uh, in ZK, uh, if you want to add uh, some customization in ZK to create, uh, to be a custom JavaScript, then you can use this TypeScript a class to extend our existing components, for example, text box. So uh, remember to add this. Uh, you will describe, you should describe your package. Usually you will use your own, uh, your own package. Uh, for example, this here we call business input number padding box, uh, which is this, and DK will create these variables for you, uh, business input. Uh, so, and then you need to do something inside, do some customizing. So you can see it's quite simple. They are just two or uh, three methods. Uh, sorry, four mass for functions. And this is uh, actually uh, coding a, a convention functions for uh, input event. So ZK has an internal naming convention. If you want to handle some specific event, uh, you can name your function in this pattern. For example, to, uh, sorry, do uh, event name and uh, Underline. Okay, so this is the uh, the naming pattern. So if you want to handle on input events, so you can see you can create a method, a function called do input underline. So when there's an input event fired uh, in your uh, in the DOM elements, then DK will look for if this widget contains this such kind of method. If it contains, then you will invoke. Okay, so here we just uh, invoke to input its parent to ensure that there's no, uh, there's a parent method to do something. Then we start doing our own business. First, we want to remove non-numeric characters. That uh, means we, I don't want user to type anything, uh, or just anything uh, except uh, the numbers. So we'll try to 
the get input nodes means we will return the DOM elements of the input element. Okay. And that uh, its values, I will try to replace anything uh, which is not uh, 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 a number. It will replace it as blank. So you can see in the browser, if I just want to type something, uh, I just type in uh, the, the text. Maybe you don't see because maybe uh, I can use a caster. Let me show you my, sorry. I forgot to enable some small application to show my typing. It's called. Okay, uh, okay. let's that's, skip that's, it. No matter how, well, I can type numbers here, but if you try to type some character like text, A, B, C, D, any other number, non numeric characters will be replacing it because you will fire input and they will be replaced. Maybe we can check the, uh, uh, the source code. Uh, so if you name your JavaScript as a business input that will uh, do something, then it will uh, create this kind of uh, WPD file and merge all your JavaScript into one uh, to save the request. Uh, so let's just uh, remove you non know, numeric here. You can see, okay, number padding. So we can see here, if I try to type something like I press A, then you are into here and try to replace it with empty uh, space, uh, with space. So actually my typing doesn't appear because it was replaced immediately. Okay, so that's uh, the first function. I, uh, first logic I want to implement is to avoid user typing any text, uh, just type numbers. And second logic is I want to add a padding uh, for each four digits. So also I do the similar things. I try to get the value and replace with regular experience. I search for four digits each and replace it with four digits with one space. Okay, so actually you can see when I type something, if I type four digits and more than four digits, you can see there's actually one space here. If you try to select, actually there's one space. Okay, so yeah, if you try to get numbers of this credit card text box, then you need to train first. Okay, or, or you can override it uh, to train it for you. This is a way. So this is uh, the, we call number padding uh, credit card box. So we just add it. Then uh, we implement this class. Uh, it's JavaScript class. We can uh, add, add on it, for example, here. Uh, if we don't declare as a, as a uh, component, we can directly use it on a text box, for example. Let's make it high. Uh, so we can just use here. You can see. Um, so this is the direct way to use it. For example, declare a namespace we call client, and uh, we use we tell uh, the zk save in this text box. We don't use our standard text box. We use uh, our custom JavaScript widgets. So when they render, so you will render with my own special widgets and I customize widgets. So you can see this is the, uh, the customized widget we, we added. Okay, so this is the direct way you use it. Uh, if you want to use apply it, you can just create this, um, this widgets and specify it's ZKWPD here. So specifies package, 
specify what it depends and specify the widget name, then it will exist. And then you can use on any components. Uh, sorry, not on any of them. On those components you extend. For our case, we because we extend on text box. So you can use on any text box. So that's uh, the simplest way, uh, the most straightforward way that you, if you just want to customize some uh, client side yeah, behavior, that's the uh, that's one way you can do it. And later I will tell you how to make it as a whole components like this, uh, like this to use a, give it a new name, a new tag name, so you can use it on, on your page. Okay, so this is the uh, another way you can build with one text box with customized JavaScript. Okay, and the next one, uh, so here, the next one, if we try to, let's go back to our four, four, four text box. Uh, so if we try to uh, implement with four text box, then there's a problem is uh, when we type characters inside. Although its benefit is uh, it, it separate a credit card number with four number each, but actually you need to move the focus among these text box. Okay, so it's quite anointing. You need to manually move the focus. And uh, and uh, the next one, if you want to press the backspace in two, uh, in one text box, and it doesn't move the focus back. So it's uh, quite anointing. So uh, you can see that we, it's better, we need to add these behavior on it to make it more easy to use. So you can see uh, four text box here. Uh, sorry, it's not there. So second, we will make the four text box uh, into one. And we add these behavior, for example, again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, four, one, two, three, four, like this. And uh, when we want to press the backspace, then we'll keep moving by pressing the backspace only. I don't need to manually uh, change the focus by pressing tab or anything, I just keep typing. Okay. So, uh, Okay, so uh, this is what we want to uh, the customize the uh, behavior we want to do it because it's more convenient for user to to do the to to enter these numbers. He doesn't need to move the focus by clicking on it or uh, by pressing a tab. Uh, when he just type four numbers, then it will automatically move to the next uh, text box. So this will make this credit card box easier to use. So you can see there, are, uh, that's what I mentioned here. I mean, for not focus the next text box when pressing backspace, uh, then move back to the previous text box. So first we, uh, let's check our code. So first uh, you can see, we still want to generate four component, uh, four text boxes. Uh -huh. So uh, here we, create here, we create a rule inside our resource, uh, inside the class folder. Okay. And actually we can, we still can create a credit card box here. So extend macro component. So this is Java side. It's just the same as what you saw uh, in previous example. Uh, so the difference is, is the focus jumping box here uh, because we use four text box and each one has a four has a focus jumping box. So the focus jumping box still extend text box. Okay, so the text box. So what we do is quite uh, similar. The first one is still when someone inputs something, it fire on input event and we just remove the non-numeric characters. So this one is uh, it's the same as you see in the a number padding box, it's the same. So, okay. And the next one is a focus next box if complete. So this is the, uh, the critical or the important behavior here. So that's why we want, that's what we want to implement. 
So when there is, when someone implement the lens equals to max lens, because you can see uh, when I create this text box, I set the max lens to four. Uh, you can see, so uh, each text box can only, you can only input four numbers. So uh, when it reached to the max lens, and which is not the lax box, I just focus the next sibling. So this will, this behavior will move, uh, will move every time when someone inputs some, some numbers, it will check and to, to decide whether it focuses to the next sibling. And the next is less is versus quite simple. It's just check if it, does it have a next sibling or doesn't have a first previous sibling, then it means it's less or first. Okay, so this one is also similar. When someone press the key, so it will fire the key down event. So on key down event, so what's the the default convention function then is to do key down. Okay, do key down. So when do key down, then that means you press a key and you will fire to key down. Then we call it super, and then uh, we implement our own logic. Behavior, uh, behavior here is to focus previous box on backspace. So I will check, does it, uh, does it, is it empty? Because uh, it's only empty and press the backspace, I will move it forward, okay? So previously, if it's still non-empty, I don't move anything. So here it doesn't move, but when I press again, yeah, you will just move to the previous box. So I check if it's empty because its value is zero and it's not the first box because if the first box doesn't need to move, there's no previous box to move, to focus. And if the event key is the backspace, then I just box the previous sibling. Okay, so I think the logic is quite easy to understand. Then that this is done, we need to apply it on it. Okay, so after applying on it, you can, uh, it will show this kind of behavior. You can see uh, you move the focus automatically by just typing, uh, uh, back, pressing the backspace. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, the more advanced way uh, to customize it. Uh, okay, then uh, let's combine them all into one. Uh, for example, uh, because we implement this JavaScript, we implement the Java, so we want to make it all into a custom component instead of using it in Zool. Um, uh, first, I just tell you that that you can, not, even you don't define a custom component, you still can directly use the component like this, uh, use a JavaScript widget like this, or you can create a macro component. And when you create a macro component, you can just uh, declare like this and using it like this. Uh -huh. So this is all still, uh, you don't need to define a real components. Uh, I mean, in, in a system scope or application scope, you can directly use, if you just want to use and limit a several page or uh, it's just a more convenient. But if you think, okay, it's worse because it's quite uh, quite oftenly used and you want to create it, then you need to define a language add-on. And you can find a simple in our sample language add-on in our document. Um, but basically it's just, you yeah, need to specify some headers and uh, some versions. And then this is the, uh, the key. Uh, which is to define a component. So this is one component. This is another component. So we start from the uh, the credit card box, uh, which is the here. You can see you uh, the credit card box is actually a macro component here. So uh, the first way you need to define a component is use your phone, your component name. For example, I could call credit card box four. Okay because it has four boxes, so I just called it four. And another one just called it credit card box because it contained one box. Okay, and here I just specify a component name. The component means the Java 
class name. So you specify a Java class name, and that's all. Uh, and remember, you need to put this file under metainfo.zk, and then it must be called language dash xml So this is an uh, a naming convention. If you name like this, then zk will automatically uh, read this uh, configuration without doing anything else. Uh, this is the default uh, way. So it's better we recommend to use this name uh, to define your own component. It's quite a straightforward. Uh, don't extra, there's no extra configuration. So if you, after you define this, then you can use it inside uh, here, credit card box, or, sorry, credit card, okay, here, credit card box for, okay. So we can use like this credit card box for, because when ZK know this language add on, it's create a component definitions for application scope. So any place in your application, uh, ZK already know there's already a credit card box for. So you can uh, use a tag name like this. And uh, you will oh, here you can see, I also try to fire on change event uh, here. So um, you can see if you uh, check the, the page here, when I type something, uh, actually, there is something changed here on the result. That's because I listened to on change event. Uh, okay, so you can see there is in a credit card composer, I actually listen. Uh, eh? uh, is this case? Oh, here, sorry. It's on change events and the result will set the value. So every time this credit card box send an unchanged event, then it will set the result, set the number to the result label here. So this is, you can also fire the uh, the event. And the event, how does the event fire? You can see here is when I listen every unchanged, that means every unchanged on the text box, I just refire it, I just repost unchanged event. And the target is this. So every time when any of the text box fire on change event, I will get some, I get a change event fire from the whole credit card box four. And so if someone listen, then you will uh, invoke this event listener. So we can read forward event uh, for my macro component. Okay, so for macro component, you just need to define that this, then that's enough. And um, oh, also you need to define a something like, we, it serves like a template. So you can see the credit card box is a template like this. And uh, so in here, we also specify the, you can, the widget here, focus jumping box here. So every text box in a credit card box for actually use a focus jumping box instead of just the ordinary uh, text box. Okay, so uh, this is the first case. Uh, the second case is uh, a credit card box, which is the, we made it by one text box. Okay, so we can use here uh, the component name, the credit card box, and it actually depends on extend from text box. So we call it, okay, we say specify extend text box. Uh, but when you, we want to use a different widget class. So, I, here I need to specify my special widget class here, business input number uh, padding uh, box. Okay. And because I want to limit the, uh, how does it look? So I also specify some default uh, property attribute name, like type is tail, uh, colon is 90, because we need to add some space between four digits, so it's not 16, it's actually 19. So column 19, max length is also 19. So here, after we add this, so here when we use, uh, let's remove it, when we use a credit card box, actually uh, here, it actually renders what's this, this setting. So it will create a text box 
at Java and use our number padding box as a JavaScript widget and also set these attributes for them. So that's why we see here. Okay, this, uh, you can see it's also a uh, text box class inside here. Okay, so this is uh, what we can customize uh, for uh, either Java side or JavaScript side, depends on how much you want. Uh, okay. So uh, let's answer some questions because someone asked questions. So, oh, okay. First, I expect to use the, sorry, just wondering why text box, not inbox. Yeah, because inbox, if you check inbox, you will know the inbox is used to uh, in enter, enter the, uh, the digit, uh, the the integer. So uh, this this not in box. So it's integer. It represents an integer. So uh, it's better. But actually, what we represent is not actual an uh, integer. It's it's not a number. It's just a a text for digits, uh, with text. So um. So I think it's. It's basically it's more more like a text uh, with but a lot number, but it's not actually a number. For example, the four digit one 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 doesn't mean one thousand one hundred one uh, eleven. It doesn't mean a number. So if you use an inbox, if you get value, you will get a number of integer, not a a number a, a text of number. Uh, so uh, it doesn't uh. This is not what we want. We want a credit card number is actually a tax, but made of uh, a series of number, not a real integer. So if you use four integer, four in box, then you will get four integers. Okay, so yeah, it's not suitable for in box. Okay, so uh, next one, I want to use Z class of access macro. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, you can use Z class yeah, I think Z class could be maybe E, maybe Z, uh, yeah, maybe it's me. It's, yeah, the Z class maybe is either, either bad because either better because, yeah, you remove the macro, uh, the macro class itself. Uh, if you use the, uh, the macro, uh, use Z class, then it will also remove it. But yeah, here we just use it as so we keep the macro itself. But sometimes if you remove too much, you can try. I will try next time yeah, because it removes too much. Sometimes it will uh, produce more uh, some side of background, something that we don't want. So uh, you know, maybe you need to compensate or you fix something, some other province. So here I choose to uh, change uh, less, so I cho choose to use the uh, S class to add one more classes on it instead of uh, overriding. But yeah, you could be using the class to, uh, because using the, the class uh, for for the text box is also fine. Yeah, but if you, if it's a component with a complicated structure like window, and window, there are many, uh, for example, the Z window, it contains Z window header, Z window uh, content, Z window title, something. There are a series of class starting with Z window. So uh, if you use Z class, that means you need to uh, define a series of class CSS for the whole new, whole, whole new component. For example, if you use a, you set Z class or Z my win, then you need to prepare Z my win title, Z my win content, Z my win something something. That there are many things you need to customize. So uh, that could be a choice, but you need to customize more. But for text box, yeah, it could be uh, using Z class or S class could be maybe similar because it just have one class, uh, just Z text box. There is no Z text box something. Yeah, but yeah, actually this could be a one. Uh, uh, the for number padding does this work before zk10? Uh, where there's no TypeScript, 
Yeah, I think there still works. Yeah, I just because now we have a, a ZK10 release, so I use ZK10 as a uh, as example. But actually, you can just convert this code, this code into type uh, into uh, JavaScript. Uh, just remove this type. I think it still works in most cases because I don't actually remove uh, override too many functions. Uh, they only exist in ZK10. So for example, do input is just a coding convention and uh, each, I think this coding, uh, this convention event listener, uh, which uh, is are common in ZK9 and ZK10. So uh, no matter you use ZK9 or ZK10, you can use, you can just override this and it will still call your function. So this, I think almost work in, in ZK9, uh, but that the way that you, you extend it will be a little bit different because ZK9 doesn't support type three, so you cannot just uh, write like this as the class extend. You need to use ZK extend. Okay, just check our uh, our source. Uh, you can know there's a way to ZK9 that it has its own extend uh, function because at that time there's the JavaScript doesn't have extend this kind of idea. So uh, we have our extend function. Okay. Uh, so yeah, for two classes, uh, focus jumping and number padding, I think still works in ZK10, uh, sorry, ZK9, because you can see what I override, uh, this one, and this one is just a very a standard, uh, event handling functions. There's no, I don't override any uh, specific function that only exists in ZK10. So you can just convert it into a JavaScript very easily. Yeah, so it's quite uh, quite easy. And I think even ZK8 still works because yeah, like I say, these method and these methods, these functions are just a normal ZK uh, event handler naming. So it's exists for versions, uh, multiple versions. Yeah, from very, I think very early. So we can use it. Uh, okay, the next question is, I thought it would be integrating iMask or similar library as client solution, handle backspace or the from Clipple in the right way. But this is the learning tutorial. So yeah, surely we can integrate some some mask, input mask or something. Yeah, if you someone know that's uh, easy to use, I think we, it seems our demo have something similar. Yeah, so you, you can integrate it, but it's, yeah, surely that will be more complicated uh, to integrate it uh, or more steps, but yeah, it's, it's usually maybe I will uh, try the next time. Oh, does anyone, any of these vortex approach a low or passing from clipboard? Yeah, oh, this is, yeah, this is, um, yes, it might be, uh, but it does not support by default because if you try to pass the 60 digit, I think it's, uh, you need to handle by yourself because it, you focus on the first one. Yeah, if you, for example, there are, uh, it doesn't support by default because they are actually four text boxes. So if you focus the first one, you pass uh, 60 digits, but surely it only accepts four. So you will just leave the four digit here. So we need to, uh, we need to extra, uh, extra processing like with someone uh, listen to some past event. And when someone passed this, I will need to split it and maybe need to, uh, need to fill these, the rest, three text box by myself, by my JavaScript and fire on change a client side to let the service I know, okay, well, someone uh, filled for, uh, just you fill first text box, but other three is filled by uh, JavaScript. So uh, it doesn't work by default, but yeah, it's a good, uh, good point. Maybe we can add uh, more, more support on the copy pass. If someone copy pass the, 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 the credit card, uh, okay, the next question is, um, 
General question. Why isn't there a marketplace of such custom component coming from the community or is there anything I do not know? Uh, sure, yeah, there's currently no such marketplace uh, because actually uh, there are not so many uh, so to, to form a marketplace. But sure, we will try to publish some small talk uh, for this. And if we keep doing, and if I think uh, one day, I think it's there might be a hope that we can create some marketplace but because it's quite complicated. Yeah, if you the marketplace, they will uh, usually if someone contributes something and it's and for from the time it goes by and maybe some feature doesn't work and no one want to maintain it, it's it will produce some problems. So so actually we 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 don't have to uh, we don't uh, actually operate this kind of marketplace because yeah it contains lots of uh, lots of uh, lots of problems we need to handle so people will contribute something but they just contribute maybe once and then they just go so and and it's hard for the team itself to maintain or maintain all those third party or contribution because everyone contribute something different okay so yeah there's currently there's no such marketplace for those uh, community contributed components. But yeah, if we will try to uh, publish small talks or articles to let you know, and anyway, you, you, you can find it in some way. Uh, someone say, at what point do you decide it can become official ZK component? Uh, uh, for example, we often need a day range selector uh, macro, someone created a selector of address display, etc. Couldn't be a provide uh, the out of the box. Yeah, yeah, it, it's hard to say because someone just uh, it still depends on uh, the the re requirements because uh, usually would just receive some a very single requirement like uh, this one, this this user that he wants. Uh, range selector, then okay, then maybe we made for him, or someone just made it for itself, and uh, uh, we just don't know if anyone else. So uh, it still depends on uh, the requirements, and also we uh, have a lots of other feature requests and bug fixes. So even we know this, it sometimes need to prioritize the the feature request. So you can see the day range picker is. Yeah, they, I think there is a feature request in our tracker, but it seems it never be so important to go into our release plan because yeah, there are always so many other features of bugs that will push it back or delayed. <laughs> so yeah, we will. Uh, so the day range, yeah, I think we will try to uh, create it in the in this series. Yeah, the next. In this series, we, we plan to create a series of kind of business input components that we will implement as a as example, and maybe in the in some moment we will release release this as a jar file so everyone can use it. Just not just an example, um, but yeah, it takes some times. Okay, so yeah, next time maybe I will try to implement some range select uh, day box, right? But yeah, it takes some time. Uh, what about carnival validation function? The carnival validation, yeah, usually it's not a, what a UI can do. So I think you can, I'm not sure if there's any library can do this. Yeah, I, I guess there, there might be. So it's more like a basis logic, uh, validation of basis logic. Uh, so I think it's not what user, user ZK need to provide because I think they are, many, many libraries, they will do this. So it's very easy. No matter if uh, it's you implement at server side, that's, I think it's quite easy. Someone press the submit and you can validate at server side and then return, show something. Okay, so uh, we still focus on the UI uh, because we are UI framework. So uh, if we make do some validation and there are many things we can do, but yeah, we don't have too much human resource. What level uh, validation is typical custom function? 
Uh, yeah, right, right, right. So thank you for your input and contribution. They are all good questions. Uh, so uh, next one, uh, we, uh, the next topic I want to talk is not, not this time and the next time, uh, but focus on the, uh, please stay tuned to, uh, we will publish the next training uh, because yeah, this is another, the next topic we will try to implement something like a country call box. That's the, because everyone, every country has its uh, country call form, uh, phone country code, sorry. Uh, for example, the uh, yeah, Americans plus one or uh, something. Uh, 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 Afghanistan is uh, 93, something like this. So actually we have a way to, uh, to show this. I'm going to show this. You can search for this country and, uh, and their flag, then you can select. And uh, I think that will be useful. So this might be the next topic. And also, we also uh, need your idea. So if you, uh, if you want to uh, know, know something, how to implement that, like I say, I, I prepare to create uh, a series of uh, training about this. Uh, so uh, if you have any ideas or you see any uh, business input, what is very common, uh, you can contribute idea, tell me uh, about your idea. So it's better to provide because I'm not sure I will know everything you know. So uh, it's better to provide maybe a list of clear specification uh, to tell what should be, what, what it should do for this component. Or maybe a demo website, tell me uh, what's the demo website so we can try to uh, know, uh, understand more about, about it, maybe integrate a third party library uh, or uh, we can make something. So, uh, sure, yeah, to, to send a recommendation, I think you can send to uh, info org at org, I think here, info Info at the cost out. Yeah, you can send it here. Info at the cost out. Yeah, to send your uh your ideas, then I will try to. Uh, check all of your ideas. Maybe some you sent too much, so I want I, I need some time to implement one by one. Uh, so I will try to implement those. Uh, we think okay, this is quite common, and uh, uh, we try to implement them to show you how to do it. And if from time to time, maybe it will become a real uh, standard component in into zk framework. Yeah, it, yeah, it takes some time. So, uh, but we'd love to see your idea because I think ZK now already have this, uh, those basic essential components. Uh, so what we need is to know what else, what else. Uh, so I think first is those business related components, but I think you know more business than us. So we uh, hope your input. So you can send to this info zk.org or yeah, just, I think our website contains some online contact form. Yeah, you can also go to an online contact form and type what you, uh, your idea and send to us. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining these sessions. I think our time is almost up. And is there any question or if you want to provide something, welcome to contact us and your idea. Yeah, thank you for joining this session.